Hello again. Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm busy printing stuff as I always am. Um, in the last video I promised to uh, show, uh, demonstrate how to remove a PLCC chip. Uh, sometimes you can use a heat gun. I tried to use a heat gun, just a heat gun and some solder. Uh, but this chip was pretty stubborn. So for the stubborn ones I recommend the Chipquick SMD1 kit which can be had on Amazon. There's a link in the description to it. So let's get started. So the uh, first thing we did is protected the chips uh, and components around it by covering it with Kapton tape. Kapton is a very high temperature tape. Um, it'll withstand the uh, heat gun up to like 500 degrees or whatever or more, I don't know. Definitely up to 400, the maximum heat of my heat gun. Um, you know, you're not just protecting the chips. Really what's going to happen is the little, the little discrete uh, components like resistors and capacitors that are around the chip will just fly off in this process because they'll, they'll get warmed up, the pads will heat up, uh, go, go molten, and the, the wind from the heat gun will just blow them away. So definitely cover everything with Kapton tape. It gets pretty annoying if you don't. Um, and then the second thing is, is you do want to have something that will give you some sort of prying ability. Now when I say that, uh, you have to be very careful not to pry too hard because you will rip the pads right off the board. Um, so the weight of, this, uh, of these tweezers is just about right, where it's not pulling up too hard, um, but one, once the thing is released, uh, once the, the, all the solder has gone molten, it should just pop out. There is one drawback to me doing this it this way in this demonstration. We'll <laughs> cover that a little later. So the Chipquick uh, SMD1 kit includes some SMD291 flux in a tube and some solder. This is not any regular typical solder, however. It is actually a solder designed by Chipquick to have a very high lead content. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to lower the melting temperature of the pads on your board to allow for easier chip removal. The idea behind all this is that we're heating our chip, the pads around our chip up to about 300 degrees and uh, because of this solder, this alloy has a much lower melting point than that, it will stay molten for a longer period of time when heated up to 300 degrees. That will allow us to move our our heat gun around the perimeter of the chip and we'll be able to very easily have f all four sides of the chip with molten solder. And that's the key to removing the chip is having all of the solder molten. First things first though, we're just going to apply some flux uh, from the chip quick tube to all our pads. Then we're going to melt pieces of our chip quick alloy to our pads. This step can take some time Remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to melt the solder under the chip and on the sides of the chip, and sometimes it takes a bit of time for the stuff under the chip to get melted and mixed with the lead. Sometimes you have to add more solder. Next, we're going to use our heat gun to heat all four sides. You could use a soldering iron for this step, but it's a little more difficult. I was successful at removing the chip, however, I didn't catch it on camera. You see, my idea of using these tweezers backfired. When I didn't have the camera running, the chip popped off the board and actually kind of went flying and I didn't capture it on video, so you'll have to trust me in the fact that <laughs> I did get the chip off fairly easily. Mm -hmm. 
Now we just need to clean off the pads. You see here that I'm using solder wick. It works pretty well. A faster alternative would be to use a solder sucker if you have one. As long as we have it out and warmed up, let's remove some of the excess from the chip too. And we're just going to go over the pads one last time with some solder braid. Now I'm being careful not to drag the solder braid along the pads with any force. We don't want to rip them up. 